Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. C-R-C. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. What's up, folks? We are getting closer to finishing the first half of our top 100 of all time. Ooh. I got to think of some new way to say this. I know. Is like the, this is the next chunk after the last chunk of good games. <laughs> this is where the people are like, all right, I'll just wait now till they get to 30 or whatever. <laughs> For These me, are not bad games. No, they really are great games. And it, although on my list this time, of the ten we're talking about today, five are new to the list. Ooh, that's exciting. But there this, you go. That's because this is kind of where the new ones show up. Okay. And then they either go up or down. Eventually, right. As time okay. goes by. But uh, five new, but only four were new this year. One is just one that moved out of the top 200 into the top 100. I don't think that any of these are new for me. And for me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have no idea. Uh, fewer abstracts this time. <laughs> One can only hope. I had like five abstracts in that yeah. top ten chunk. It just happened to How line up that way. How many abstracts are like in your top 100? Lost oh, I don't mind. know. 15 or so, maybe? 15? Wow. Maybe that's too many. Maybe that's too many. But if, you're, if we're counting abstracts I mean, the way like, you count abstracts... Like, then it's like four. Like, yeah. It's like, what, 15% of your games? Um, yeah, usually 15 <laughs> out of 100 is uh, is 15 per cent. No! <laughs> It's, we gotta get started. It's, it's real out here. Number 70. All right, my number 70 is a game. I'm going back to my uh, conflict roots, I guess you'd you say. Go. But You're this back. still has a very... <sighs> this still has a very Euro feel to it. No! But this, this, uh, the gimmick, quote-unquote, on this game is what really hooked me the first time. And that is the Cube Tower. And uh, the first time I came in with the Cube Tower was with Wallenstein, but this, my number 70, is my favorite version of Wallenstein, and that is Shogun. Uh, and the reason I like Shogun so much is because, first of all, the map is tighter. Uh, it has a Japanese theme, which I like better than the German theme. Nothing against Germans, just I like the way it looks better. And... Um, uh, I liked the changes that they put into uh, Shogun, which, I always have to say this, because you always say that Wallenstein's the better game. They actually made the better games called Shogun, and then they had to take those changes and put them into Wallenstein and remake Wallenstein because it was the better version. So. All right. Cool. You done? Completely didn't. Wow. Debate. Wow. Completely He's, didn't. He just debate. gave you some of your own stink. That's what that was. Of. That was a very Sam yeah, kind of thing. Maybe so. All right, my number I 70. I liked it. Yes, my number 70 is Wallenstein. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Are you serious? I'm serious. Oh, oh my no goodness. Way. No wonder he was so quiet. Because so, now it's going to flow. No, I, I, I don't. I, I mean, it's like Wallenstein would be. It's just. I just like it slightly better than Shogun. That's all. I mean. They're pretty much the exact same game. They are. The it's only advantage different. Wallenstein has now is that it has some expansions that Shogun does not, although I will say that I hardly ever play with those. You know, Queen sticks everything in a box these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have that humongous box that had a couple expansions, and they took the turn order thing, which was really good from Shogun, and added it. Shogun so, has a big box, too, as well. But. That's true, it does. Maybe that has some expansions in it, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Get one of them. They're both fine. Here's the deal, though. We w I will say this. I what's the new one? Uh, light and dark. What's that called? Um, Path of Light and Darkness. No. no Immortals. No, no. Immortals. Oh, Immortals. Immortals. The two. Immortals. Right. So that one is not, just to have a heads up is not on my top 100. I, I like that game fine, but I think both Wallenstein and Shogun are better, better games, games at yeah. this point. So, but they all use the cube tower, which is an yeah. amazing thing. And they all and use kind of a similar system as well. Yeah. Although in Wallenstein and and Shogun, same difference i really just this is such a deep game really and it really is there's some conflict in it but not that much in fact you think that depends on how you play it. that immortals though would be well no but i mean you can only fight twice per thing in immortals you can fight a Every whole ton one. you can fight like four yeah. or five times um this one has less conflict and yet i like it because there's you know you're maneuvering around the board you're building up in different spots i don't know i just think it's a really good game it also has a nice taxation system <coughs> Where yeah. eventually the peasants are like, 
we've had enough. Knock it off! And then they revolt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Anyway, my number 70, seriously, Wallenstein. You done? So, so what's your good. number 70? Are you done? Because my number 70 is Immortals. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> he hasn't even played that game. What's wrong with you? That would be, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> All right, my number 70 is actually Palazzo, which is a uh, Rainer Canizia building up palaces card game. It's a lot like Alhambra. Mortals would have been a better choice. The Mortals would have been a better choice if I had played it, but I haven't which, played which it. Which he won't. Just take my word for it. Okay, set fine. Right I'm just going to say it's Immortals then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, that's, we can do that? Yeah. Yeah, man, do whatever you want. On the fly. So, yeah, Palazzo, I really enjoy. It's a game that's been out for many years now in the uh, Leia line, and I, it's one of my favorites in that line. It's a very breezy kind of game. It's simple to play. Uh, grab money and then spend that money to build up palaces and try to manage, you know, different uh, uh, aspects of those palaces, height, what they're made out of, stuff like that. Like I said, it's a lot like Ambra. Ambra I usually stick with when I'm using it as a gateway game. And that showed up on my list already in a previous uh, chunk of 10, but this one I like a little bit better uh, from a sort of tactics point of view. I just enjoy the game a little more. So that's my number 70, Palazzo. Number 69. All right, my number 69 is Francis Drake. Francis Drake is from uh, Eagle Griffin. It is another big game. It's two big giant boxes in a row. In fact, I think they're on top of each other in my collection. Um, but Francis Drake is like two halves of the game, and both halves are a lot of fun. The first half is my favorite, though, where you're going into the market and preparing for the second half, and it's like Tokaido. You can move as far as you want, but you then can't go back. So you, oh, this is a great space. I want to get a bunch of gunpowder. And then the second half, you're kind of like trying to outthink everybody else and send your ships out to different areas to get the different ways. That, that's how you mostly get the points for the game. Okay. They work together really well. Um, <clears throat> it's very euro -y, honestly, but there's also a little bit of Ooh, I, you know, you thought I wasn't going to send that ship there, and I did. Ha, 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 type moments. Really good game. Uh, not many people talk about this one, though. Francis Drake. Yeah. It's I have not game. played it. Have it's you played it? Game, yeah. I think you might like it, actually. My 69 is Notre Dame. Or Notre Dame, depends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they just came out with the 10th anniversary of this they one. They did. Um... And they added in an expansion that came out at some point in the Does game's it add life. Fun. That's the. I was about, I was about to say that's, yeah. that. That's the only nice thing you're about to say about this game. Yes. Yeah. It's actually not even nice. You get more cardboard. Oh. <laughs> that you have to store and possibly play with. And I don't know why this game's on the list. I needed another number. And no, I really like this game. I don't know why you guys are hating. I think it's a good card drafting. There's a little card drafting at the beginning of each round, and then you are manipulating your little part of the city to um, to do things efficiently. And the one thing I like, besides the card drafting, is my favorite part of the game. The other thing is that if you, the more you do something, the the better you get at it exponentially. Kind of like you know, if I'm um, if I put a, a cube in the uh, gain money section of the city. I get one coin the second time I go there. The old cube is still there, so I get two money out of that. And if you focus on something, you can start really churning the machine. Of course, you're ignoring other stuff. I don't know. It just I like the way that plays out because it lets me specialize and then in like four turns realize I've made horrible mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just about everything to say, else if, you, is if, you, if you neglect stuff in that game though, you're really Yeah, yeah. You're really starting to uh, put the hurt on yourself. Yeah, but it is a fun game. I do out. enjoy it. I do enjoy you the shut game. Shut up, I like rats. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> My number sixty nine, Notre Dame. I think that takes his he likes to stick in that little disaster thing in his games. He has it in a lot of his games. Like, hey, if you don't do this, mm -hmm. you're going to get beat up. But I think it's more pronounced than this one. Well, I think I it came from this one, if I'm not mistaken. This is pretty old now. And then after this one, he was like, you know, I really like hurting the players. In the Year of the Dragon is going to be next, you know. So yeah, that, that came one's, out that right one's, after. That one's the worst. <clears throat> that one's regard. just disaster But, like, stuff. Bruges has these disasters, but you can say, hey, I'm going to take stuff to prevent them. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eh, I don't know. All right, what do you got? All right, it's got to be better than his. My number 69 is a game that is <sighs> probably going to be on your list. Is it I Bill and Ted's it. Excellent Adventure? No, that would not. be. Oh. <laughs> oh, that would be cool, though. 69, dude. Um, no, uh, Nurishima Hex. Nurishima Hex. That's definitely it's probably be not even on his list. I no, would guess it is. It is. It's probably in his top ten. All right. Well, what do you? 
Anyway, I'm Jerry surprised Schumacher. it's high on your list. No, I really enjoy playing it. Um, I, I and but I do have to say with the caveat that most of my plays of this game have been in a digital format. They haven't been they haven't been on an actual table or anything like that. Um, which, in my opinion, I think is okay. It's, nah, it's, it's, it's fine. The same game. It's the same game. There's no difference. It's just a little bit easier to play. There's a no lot setup. easier to play. There's no setup. The, the app take care, takes care of all of the. Um, you know, accounting for you, what goes where and how everything works out. So there's no uh, mess ups in there because when I've played it on an actual table, that's where I've made the most mistakes is in the resolution phase of the battle. So, um, but I really enjoy the game. I have a great time playing it. It's it's my, I guess you could say it's my replacement for a chess-like game where it is one person going head to head against another person. I usually don't play it with more than two people because I just don't enjoy it that way. It gets too convoluted for me, but one on one, one army against another army, I really enjoy it. Um, but uh, it, it does have a little bit of a, a uh, you know, a top draw, a, a deck drawing problem where you can just not get the right stuff that you need. But usually that levels out a bit over the course of a game, but not enough for it to uh, take it off my list at all. Mm -hmm. So that's my number 69, how, Nurishima Hex. How many factions are on the digital one now? I haven't played it in a while. They got a, they got a bunch, yeah. yeah. Don't they have all of them? Almost. You just have to pay for them? Almost, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's pretty they cool. They just announced a new one, actually, that's coming out this year. So, so they're, they're staying pretty abreast of the <clears> ones that come out in person? I mean, In, in the digital form? form? Yeah. Yeah, there might be like one behind something. Oh, that's like pretty that. cool. Then. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Number sixty-eight. All right, my number sixty-eight is. Oh wow, this is an abstract. <laughs> uh, you guys, you. I don't think you've seen this, and I played with you, and I really like it. And you might be surprised. You also might not know what it is. This is a game called Tintas, uh, which means inks in Spanish, Do you and. Know that? And it is, I'll, I'll explain it very briefly and see if you remember what it is. Okay, it's a, it's a little completely wooden abstract with colored cylinders, and you are on your turn bouncing from one point oh, to another one point in a direct company. line and taking that piece off the board. <laughs> you could say that about no, every no, single he, game he on this what list. There's a, oh, this is one of those ones from that company. I, know, I forget this the name of the company. This is from that guy who made the thing, man. Yeah. There's a company at Essen, <clears> and they make these bright colored abstract games. That are wooden and they come in like pizza boxes almost. I don't know that they're bright colored, but yes. But they're like wooden pieces. They're really nice, but um, I cannot remember any of the names of any of the games. They're rough. And what? But he'll say the one with colors and bouncing off, and I'll be like, oh yeah, that one. <laughs> That's how I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, again, this is a weird pick. I get that, but this game is fantastic. I love this abstract game. No, it's really good. I agree. <clears throat> it is. The goal is simple. The manipulation of the board is simple, but three, four turns in when the board starts to clear up a little bit and you can draw many more straight lines to different places, it starts to get heady because you need to gather all the pillars of one color if you can. So you need to make sure that with a move you don't allow your opponent to take a single yellow, let's say, when you've collected like four of those already and you're clearly going for that goal. So it's, it's a, as much a game about watching out for what you allow your opponent to do than what you do yourself. And it's just a clean, clean design. I really enjoy it, and it's got the good looks to go on top of it. So Tintas is my number 68. And it's supposed to be, what is that in Spanish? Inks. Inks? Yeah, like, like multiple ink. Like ink. Multiple ink. Hmm. Interesting. It's your turn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Go ahead. My number 68 is, nah, I guess maybe you might be able to call it an abstract strategy game, but oh, you're, gonna get you're moving right dice around on the board, but the dice stand for a number of different things like oh, do they? movement. They also what? stand for what kind of attack they have. Wow, also, this made your top 100? Oh, yeah, it did last year, too. I don't know what this is yet, but okay. It's called Quantum called Quantum, oh. and it is a dice game where your dice represent your ships that are moving out. You're trying to build, I, I don't remember the lore behind it, It's some. you're trying to build these different quantum cubes. And, oh, that's the game you, from that guy who did the thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, exactly, right, yeah. It's, it worked when he said it, might as well try it out too. The but anyway, Quantum Passport is... Passport Games, is, by the way, is the company. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the ships are the things, yeah. Go ahead. 
<laughs> anyway, Quantum is a is a great game. It is very uh, fun. It is also very difficult to curb when you're teaching curb yourself uh, when you're teaching somebody new how to play. So somebody who knows how to play the game will usually win. Um, I won't even say usually. I think head, the better player will shoulders, win. Head and shoulders above the person who's learning because you'll know how to manipulate your dice and, and when's the best time to do this and all this other kind of stuff. But I really do enjoy it. It has variable player powers. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in it. Really enjoy it. The cubes, um, the cubes, the, the dice are really neat looking translucent colors and they're bright. They're big and chunky as well. So uh, I just like everything about this game. I really enjoy it. Quantum, my number 68. Interesting. Huh. I, I really... It just seems very mathy, the game. No, You're not a big fan of mathy games normally. All right, my number 68 is the first of the new games. This one was nominated for the Spiel this... this wow, yeah, I just... What happened to me there? I kind of forgot the, the, the award in the middle of it. Anyway. I just say Spiel because I don't like pronouncing the whole thing. Because it messes with my mouth. Anywho. So which of the three is it? It's it not, is. It's not King Domino. Uh, oh, it's got to be the uh, racy... No, no, Magic Maze. Magic you Maze. Love, yeah. I really do like Magic Maze. Magic Maze was introduced to us. And we were to Gathering Our Friends, and yeah. Aldi from Board Game Geek was just like, play this guy. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he was really pushing it. He was it. pushing it to everybody, yeah. And it was... I just... I fell in love with it. It's just... It's such a... I, I tend to like fast logic co-ops. I mean, it's a pretty as narrow as, genre, my man. Name one other game that is a fast logic co-op. Well, there's that. Actually, the first one I can think of is a really bad one. It's that spaceship game from Stronghold Games. Remember the one that looks like Star Wars in the cover? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, no, okay. I should say, I, I guess I like co-ops where we're all working together. I like speed co-ops, like Escape and things like that. Okay, okay, got it. I, I tend Real to like those. Co -ops. And this one is Ugh. like, you're all working together, moving pieces across the board. You didn't like Magic Maze? It was okay. And I played it a few times. Okay? And I never played it. Oh, I, I played don't. it a few times and I was like, okay, I'm I done. I can't tell you how many times I asked people to teach me how to play this game at Origins, and and every single one of them but it's said, you're... said no. Everybody came, came up and said, I don't know if you'll like it. <laughs> They're mostly worried you're going to so, be mean, I'm Sam. Like, the okay, game has fine. the possibility for, for people to be mean to one another. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. How? You can do that whole, like... Like forcing people oh, to Oh, that's thing. true. Where you put yeah. the token in front of someone. Basically, you're not allowed to tell each other what to do, but you can put a token in front of somebody else, and that means you need to do something. Uh, so I guarantee someone will you that thing would have taken flight had somebody been doing someone... it. Because people would be like, and I'd be like, I have no idea what you want me to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. But that is what happens. That's why First you won't it there, like it, people and then say. You, and then, and then <laughs> you place it there, and then someone will put it back in front of you, and you're like, no, it's definitely you. And then they're like, what? And then you're like, and then you... It's a really... This is going to be great audio, by the way. <laughs> I really like this game a lot. It has lots of different levels. I'm, I'm curious about this new expansion. I didn't think it needed much more, needs right? More There's like stuff, 17 sure, levels yeah. in the game of play. But anyway, Magic Maze, really fun. Number 67. My 67 is a game made out of cardboard. It's a card game. That would be really bad if it had been like this a wooden abstract. Fully wooden abstract. Yeah. Uh, this is a game that uh, was put out some years ago by Z-Man Games. Yes. It's a game called R Echo. It's a card game, a little card game. Is it Echo or Eco? I don't know. I've always said R Echo, but I guess Eco works too. R Eco. Is it being economic? Could it be Echo? It's no. It's definitely got the. Uh, uh, Dash in there, the whatever, R stands for recycling, hyphen. right? The hyphen, thank you, yes. The R stands uh, for recycling. It's about trash, right? It's about trash recycling, yeah. Um, I mean, you could say eco That's or echo. That's not a game, echo, I don't know. ladies and gentlemen. Recycle your stuff. Anyway, um, it's a card game. It's a very simple little card game. Japanese designer. I forget uh, the name right now. I think it's uh, Susumu Kawasaki, I think, is the designer. And it is... Wow. He forgot the name. I, did, that, I was, that I was, was like impressive. searching in my head there for who it was. Um, and it's just simply a game of uh, sort of organizing where cards go at these four different recycling plants uh, for, for trash. But there's a couple of really clever twists in it. For one thing, you never draw a, car, a card blind in this game, ever, except your opening hand. Because every time you play to a factory, you're going to pick up the stuff sitting at the other side of that factory that has been that is unsorted. You will sort that later, right? So I really like that. Anywhere you play, you know what you're getting. 
And then the other thing is your hand represents your like garbage truck, and if you ever go above a certain number of cards in your hand, you have to dump them illegally. And as soon as you do that, those cards start to count against your score. I'm offended. Are you offended? Why? You're dumping, you're dumping trash. Yeah. Have but you're you seen in front of this you're house? Hurting Mother Earth. Right, which is why you shouldn't do that in the game, and it penalizes you for that. Oh. Mother Earth slaps you around. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a really clever little card game. It's out of print, I'm pretty sure, and it, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to get, I think, but I really enjoy it. I've liked it as as one of my favorite fillers for a long time. Our echo is my 67. My number 67 is possibly my most played game of 2017 so far. Wow. Uh, as soon as I got it, and I took it to Dice Tower Con and probably played it 10 times there, and that is Tief Tashin. This is the new... Um, Glad you got a weird little obscure game on your list, too. Hey, man, yeah, but no, this is Deal not... Deal with that. This is not going to be obscure long if I have anything to do I with it. I actually um, joyful fun. This means deep pockets, and in this game, it is... Uh, one person is the president. They get some money each turn. They split it up. Everyone votes. Are you happy with the president's split? Are you going to no. vote to overthrow the president and become the new president yourself? Yeah. Or are you going to, like, basically just try to take the top card of the deck, you know, yes. skim off the top? It's a very simple game, almost like a rock, paper, scissors with a little bit extra at it, and it just plays phenomenally. I love this game a lot. Um, Teeth Tashin. I'm so excited about this game that we are working to try to get it in the Dice Tower Essentials. So hopefully we'll see that happen as time goes by. You heard it here. First? That's why I'm sticking announcements in the middle of the top That's 100. a great idea. Now I'll put that in the description. Join us for our next chunk of top 10. Now with announcements. <laughs> All right, what do you got? All right, my number 67 is definitely not a new game. As a matter of fact, it's uh, uh, probably Mancala. the <clears throat> oldest. The Game of Life. Well, this one's, uh, Sorry. I like the newer version of this one. Jenga. Better than the older version, because I never played the older version. But Trouble. this is, I don't know. It's called Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Um, Wasn't that already on your list? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Uh, I really enjoy this. This is one of the first games that I played that used the box as part of the board. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, I mean, way back when, that just kind of blew my mind. I was like, what? Because usually you put this over on the side of the board, and now we're actually using the box. Yeah. It was awesome. It's very economical, using every part of the game. Exactly. I mean, you are literally using every part of the game, except for the, well, no, you use the rule book, too, because you got to read it Ooh. first. Has anyone done that yet, where a game uses the rule book as one of the components? Make it happen, no. But then what if you need to Is check the rule? One of the components <laughs> into the game, you mean? Yeah. I guess I would I would argue like legacy style games technically utilize the rule book past its original put a reading. Sticker in it. Yeah. I guess uh. maybe. Anyway, we digress. Cleopatra and the Society of Architects <laughs> is <laughs> All right, NPR, go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I really enjoy the aesthetics of the game. Uh, all of the plastic m minis that, that are in the game, they're not really minis, they're more like just pieces that are used to build the different courtyard pieces of, of uh, Cleopatra's palace. Um, I like the, the balance of having to take care of uh, or having to balance how, much, how many curses you take yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. I really enjoy that. Uh, just really, it, it's, it's really an evergreen game for me. It's, it's always had a place on my shelf and I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. I like it that much. My number 67, Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Number 66. All right, my number 66 is new to the list, but was actually 111 last year. Okay. It's moved up, and it's knocked out Defenders of the Realm, actually. And that's because Defenders of the Last Stand is now my game of choice oh. in this genre. Huh. I like Defenders of the Realm a lot, but Defenders of the Last Stand, even though I think I probably like fantasy more than post-apocalyptic. What's wrong with you? Because post-apocalyptic is super depressing. Yeah. It's also kind of, sometimes it's kind of gross. Yeah. yeah. However, in this game, it really is kind of fun. It's like it takes the fun parts of like Mad Max, right? Yeah. And puts them in the game, and it's not just Mad Max. It like takes different genres. So you got bikers running around, but this game has adventure stories you can go on. It has you can mutate, which can be good, except that when you mutate too much, then that's a bad thing. Uh, I. It's it's the slightest bit clunky, right? There's just a little bit too much going on, maybe. Mm -hmm. But the stories it tells, it has cool little plastic figures all over the board. I really like the whole production. Um, I don't know if this is my favorite post-apocalyptic game, but it's pretty high up there. So, Defenders of the Last Stand. 
Cool. I think you played this one even. I did. I did. I enjoyed it. I, I. It's not on my list. I kind of felt the same way you did, where I find it a little bit clunky. It's like watching a late night like B movie with a cool setting. I'm like, oh, I dig it, but I don't really think I'm gonna come back to watch this a lot more to appreciate like the cinematography or whatever. It's, <laughs> it's you know, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little rough around the edges. My number sixty-six is um, probably a little bit rough around the edges as well. Uh, but it is, uh, it is definitely, I would say, in my top five. It's in the wrong ch- chunk of the list. Ten, then. You top gotta wait. ten zombie games, I would imagine. Um, you have that many zombie games in your top one hundred? No, I wouldn't say that. How many of them are abstract? None. Okay, well then I'm gonna guess. It's the it's, the it's one last of the night on Earth. Ones. Yes, last night on Earth. That's not on Earth. I really enjoy this game. It was, uh, I liked, you were talking about the B-movie type stuff mm-hmm. on his. Oh, this is like the king of B-movie this games. This is like the king of B-movie <laughs> zombie games, man. I mean, it is like, it squeezes every bit of zombie ooze out of it that you possibly can. That is disgusting. <laughs> well, I mean, it's also descriptive, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, get that zombie ooze. Yeah, that's right. Let's zombie eat lunch. Ooze. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I like how it has different um, uh, uh, scenarios. I love how it has different scenarios. I love how you can play teams. Um, uh, I, I just like everything about the game. It's I don't have everything for it, though, because there's a lot of stuff out there for it. I mean, there is a lot of stuff, and, and some of it is kind of hard to get a hold of. Because usually, I, when I go into a, a gaming store, I'll look for stuff, and there's usually not a whole lot of Last Night on Earth stuff out there anymore. They've supported um, the game a lot, though, right? No, they have. They have. Flying Frog Productions. Yeah, well, they don't normally even put out new games. They're usually just supporting the ones they already have. But uh, yeah. there's there's a lot out there for it, and I, don't, I, I know I, I probably have only, only about half of it. But, I mean, that's really enough to have a whole lot of fun playing this game. Um, some people are hung up on the on the artistic style that they took, like this guy here. Um, I hate it. I, I like it. It adds to the, the B-movie feel. The campiness uh, of yeah, it? Yeah, the campiness of it. That's, yes. I, I like it. Um, so I really enjoy it. My number 66, Last Night on Earth. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we can keep this uh, campy train rolling. Probably not. <laughs> so this is a campy game. All right, let's see what it is. <laughs> My 66 is Oceanus. Definitely not campy. It's not very campy. I mean, it is about you being in a sub. It's more steampunky. Grabbing weird, like, sea Definitely creatures and stuff. Wow, it's that's pretty high in your list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Oceanus is, um, has a lot of things going forward that uh, right away when I first found out about the game put it on my radar. It's gorgeous, as to be expected from Yellow. Yeah, yeah. It's from Antoine Boza, the designer. I tend to like his stuff. It's a drafting game, kind of. I tend to like that. And then the whole spatial play of it is really, really jives with my brain, where you are drafting through one deck, and that's the top level of the, uh, the chunk of ocean you're exploring. Then you draft through a second deck, and that's right below that, and then a third. And the game's really simple. That's the one, the main negative I think it's going to get from just about anybody, including me, okay? It's a, it's a really light game. It's not a game I'm going to play a whole lot because the depth uh-huh, just isn't uh, there. Wow. But... See, a big deal would have been made if I had made a joke like that. <laughs> no, I'm not approving of this garbage. <laughs> it was unintentional. Yeah. Come on, man. Scripted. Um... So again, I don't think it, it's it's gonna have a lot of replayability necessarily, but every time I do play it, I enjoy it, and it's just a breezy, fun game. I, I really, really like it. So Oceanus is my sixty-six. Check it out. Number sixty-five. All right, my number sixty-five and my number sixty-four are part of the same system of games. Is um, that legal? We'll make it legal. <laughs> what just? What was that? <laughs> Star Wars! <laughs> no, it's not oh, Star dang. Wars. It's not Star Wars. It's from the Command and Colors system, both of these games. But my number 65 is uh, called The Great War. It is the... Wow! Uh, I, no, I, I really enjoy the game. and I, This is the only World War One game that's on my list because, quite frankly, they don't make a whole lot of good World War One games. Um, oh, no, that's true. I was about to say, <laughs> that's probably the only one on most people's I list. I mean... Uh, the command and color system I know Pathagory exists is really yeah right so do I um, I don't uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. 
the command and color system is one that I really enjoy. Um, and this is probably one of uh, three different command and colors games that are going to be on my list. Um, being there's two of them right here. So uh, the Great War, though, uses the same kind of system as the next one in my list. Um, but it uses it in a slightly less inefficient way. It's still really fun. And I, I love how they captured trench warfare in a non-boring way. Because, frankly, I mean, if you uh, trench warfare was like a whole lot of boring and then a whole lot of compact action and then a whole lot of boring of just people just sitting in a trench. Mm -hmm. And this game took that possibly really drab um, scene of war and, and made it into a enjoyably tactical strategic game and I, I i like that about it i mean there's a lot of different things that go into it but um i really enjoy the great war i had a great time with it uh my number 65. Huh. all right your number 65 also in the command and color system it is indeed it might have colors <laughs> it's a black and white game <laughs> that would be great again it doesn't line up though uh, this is a co-op game from the designer of uh, Pandemic, a game you might see later on my list. I'm guessing it's forbidden something then. It's not! Is it another Pandemic? It's not. Did he make any other games? He did. Roll Through the Ages is the only one. It's not co-op. The Chariot game. The tension is palpable. <laughs> what other game did he make? Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. Really? That's that yeah, high on your list? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the thing I don't like about this game. The theme. It looks The horrible. theme I like, right? I never knew anything about Thunderbirds. Like, after I played the game, I watched a little bit of it, and then I watched a new Amazon I series. I watched the intro. The and intro is on point, man, and it's brief. <laughs> it's real brief. <laughs> I can't even lie. Um, here's he likes the thing. short games, but not short right, intros. Writing the slide that goes forever <laughs> to his copy. We need to save the world. Hold on. Um, the thing I don't like is the look of the game, for the most part. It's got screen caps from the TV show, the old and one. And it's really bad. And they're like, yeah, I mean, it's it's a bunch of Muppets and stuff, whatever. Yeah. But um, <laughs> not m m Puppets, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I meant as a joke. Hurry up. I know Summer will slap you through I know, the screen. Right? He will. So, again, the look is definitely an acquired taste, and I have not necessarily acquired it, but the gameplay is great. It's, it's rich, it's tactical, it's different. It forces you to think about multiple things at different times. You really need to sort of keep a, a lot of up in the air uh, so nothing suffers. And then the logistics of bringing whoever you need together somewhere to take care of a crisis really works. Plus, I keep doing that, plus... They came out with three expansions, three different sort of little expansions, which are all good and all do add something interesting to the game. So, yeah, I really enjoy this one, surprisingly, because it's not one I was really expecting to, to enjoy. Nothing in it would guarantee me even looking at it. It's not a theme I enjoy. It's, I mean, the designer I like, and it's co-op, but everything else was kind of pushing me away, really. But despite all those things, I think the game is great. So, my 65... Thunderbirds. All right, my number 65 was my number 62 last year, so it's pretty close to the same spot. It's been on my list, I think, almost since the game has come out. It was already on Z's list, and that is Dixit. Okay. Dixit is just a great party game. I really like Dixit. I mean, at this point, I'm not as excited about every Dixit expansion that comes out because <laughs> I think we've reached a point of, you know, the pile of cards are like this right. high. Saturation. Although the last one with the little foil on the cards, and they've managed gorgeous, to find man. they've managed to find artists who manage they're either taking the same drugs the original artist took, or Yeah, that's it's well known. <laughs> <laughs> or well no, they managed to copy the style. I d I don't actually think the artist was on drugs. But but the but the thing about Dixit that's so great is the art, really. I mean, the game itself is also really... It's, it's a clever game, you know, trying to get a lot of people to guess your answer, but not everyone. Oh, so you're that, trying to get one person to guess. Oh, one person yeah, to get yeah, it, right, right. right. So as long as you have that communication <clears throat> in your head with one person, but the art is just fantastic. You look at these pictures and you're thinking, what is going on in them? No one knows. Not even the artist. Because drugs, kids. 
Play Dixit. We're gonna but don't get like do okay, drugs. just to clear so we don't get you know in trouble for libel. I don't actually think they were on drugs. We're also kidding. It's a joke. Number sixty-four. All right, my number sixty-four, as I have already told you, is also in the Command and Color system. Wow. And it is Battle Lore. It uses the same. Actually, this one came out before the First Great War. I'm and assuming it's it Battle Lore second edition. Second edition, yes, okay. that's correct. Well, the I don't bad know. one? Huh? No, the good one. It's all about Battle Lore 1, man. Flags forever. Do you still have that? I do. You do? Yeah. You really have Battle Lore in first edition? Of course, man. I'm a loyalist. Have you fixed any of those spears and swords? They're all broke. No, they're sure. all, they're like, yeah, they're all, they're all, they're all, they're all, well, if the guy's we laying on We will murder you. <laughs> Lay down right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, Battle Lord uses that uh, magic system that the Great War also used, but they called it a command system. Okay. You know, uh, I command you. Yes, exactly, right? <laughs> it was a little bit. Uh, I mean, when I played the Great War, I was like, this is. They definitely used the Battle Lord system huh. for this one. Okay. They definitely used that. But I, it was fine. It worked. It, it, it was great. It was just, eh, you know. But uh, I, I enjoyed first edition of Battle Lord. I was really hoping that they would take the more historical route oh, okay. and use more historical battles. And they kind of started to do that, but then they also started putting in all of those little fantastical monsters. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. So I kind of gave up on Battle Lore okay. first edition. I just, I was like, okay, I love the monsters. No, that's fine. I do too. I, I, but it, it's. I think he's saying he would rather have one thing I, or I the would, other. Yeah, I would have, because it's it's in the whole commands and color system. I I would have liked it to remain historical. All the other games are historical. Why does Battle Lore have to be fantastical? Why can't it? Because I wanted a fantastical one. Well, it's not all about you, dude. It, in this I case, it historical. was. I, I called Richard Bork and said, no, "Give right. me what I want. What I really, really want." <laughs> I, I, would, I, I, just I had, have it I in my head already to keep going, picture. but I'm not going to do it. I just had a visual picture of him and Richard Borg singing that song <laughs> in a living room somewhere. Um, anyway, but so this anyway. one's all fantastical. But, he but digresses, yeah. though. He digresses. Second edition is all... Uh, so first edition was like, okay, I, I just... I actually got rid of it. Um... I can't remember what I traded it for. I traded it to somebody for something. I now you're really digressing. But anyway, <laughs> I got rid of it. When second edition came out, it was like nothing but fantastical. Right. I was like, okay, we'll give it a try. And they actually cleaned up the system. They made it better. I liked the setup. It was a lot better this time. Right. Um, I liked everything about second edition much more than first edition, which is why it made my list. It's actually one of the best setups in a game ever. No, I do. Really. It's, it's very quick. It's very... It's actually... You're 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 already starting the conflict during setup. With right. How you how you place your different things out, and I really enjoy that. It's really great. It's it's uh, strategic from the very beginning, from the beginning of setup. So I, I, I really enjoy it. That's why it edged out the Great War, uh, even though the Great War is a historical setting. Um, but uh, that's my number sixty four, Battle Lore Second Edition. I think my number sixty four was already on Sam's list. I think, and that is Spyfall. Was Spyfall on your I list? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Spyfall, mm -hmm. I, I just it's still one of those games. You know, you're at a convention, like, what should we play? Hey, I know what. Spyfall. It's a cool themed game, and yet the theme makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But who cares? Because it's just really fun. Now, it is a slightly group dependent. I played Spyfall a few times with a few groups that did not go as well because people just keep asking the same questions. Like, what's the temperature here? Are you having a good time? You know. The, the more clever, interesting questions, and they still need to put a play rate in it. Are you kidding me? I will, I will not play this with my youth group anymore. Because they ask the same old questions I, over and over again. I tried it uh, the last the last time we had youth group before the hurricane, and it went, it fell flat. Absolutely. Because they just kept asking the same kind of boring yeah, questions? Yeah, it just wasn't the right group of kids to play with. I've, I've played with youth group before, and it's gone over like gangbusters. But this time it just fell flat, so I don't think I'll bring it anymore. I yeah. think this is highly group dependent. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, but I still, I mean, when I play with it's that... great game. When you it's play with that game. group, it's a lot of fun. I really wish a company other than Cryptozoic had done it, or Hobby World. They both... The art is fine and everything, but this whole not giving each person a reference card and stuff... Um, I don't know, but doesn't matter. Love the game. Spyfall. <laughs> cool. My number 64 is a, uh, a Euro game from a company, originally from a company, that I'm always on the lookout for their stuff now. I really think they are on point. That's true. You really do like 
Aporta. Oh. Aporta's the company. And this is Automania. Oh, good choice on game there, sir. Automania is, again, a Euro game in which you are building and selling vehicles. Is this the one that has the ships and... The little the ships on the side and the, yeah, you sort of like yeah, launch cars through the production line. Actually would have been helpful. A picture of the game. I don't know. I hate you so much sometimes. <laughs> You're editing this one, right? <clears throat> so, uh, like I said, Aporta Games has done, lately, they've been on fire for me. They've done this, they did the, um, the city that, what is that one called, man? Avenue they did, they did Capital Lux. They were just doing, every, every time they come out with something, it seems, I really enjoy it. I, I, they, they're I'm just on it fire. Now, when we do our top ten games from Essen, whatever game they're coming out with, he'll put on his list. I don't know, because this year they're doing that Destination X game, and that's just not for me. Oh, is that their game for this year? Yeah, that's mind. one of them. That's one of them. Anyway, um, oh, there is another game, again, digressing here. Bad, but they do have another game that I have. This is our for. rabbit trail <laughs> top ten. Automania is on fire, baby. Check Squirrels. it out. I just really enjoyed it. It's an Optimus Asian game that really works for me, and it's got a bright, good look to it. So, my 64, Automania. Number 63. All right, my 63, I think, is a new game to me, and I think it's the first three-way crossover. I think. I think. Did we do that already? No? No? Okay. Maybe we, I don't know. Anyway, it's Santorini. Oh. Um, I know it was on yours. Was it on yours? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, definitely you gave, on yours. You guys gave me a whole bunch of guff. Oh, that's because we were surprised that you did it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Is that mine already? I think, maybe, was it? I don't know. It will be. If it hasn't. So it's definitely I don't remember. Three, I really don't recall. It's definitely a three-way crossover so, either been, way. There's been some time between these, so. I remember when he first came and showed us this game a, a couple years ago, and they showed us the prototype with all the, the pieces, and I thought, oh, that looks clever, but eh, it looks like it looks like a neat Three-dimensional, but probably a boring abstract game. Right. Big deal. Come on, Roxley Games. I love the stuff that you do. Why are you doing this one? And then I played it, and I was like, it was one of those games you play, and you're like, that's how the game's played? Let's try it again. Then you play it again, you're like, all right, all right, one more time. This time I have it. And then, okay, I got it now. They're like, oh, let's play with these powers. I'm like, what? What? Your power is overpowered. Right. And it's just, oh, man, you play with the different powers, and there's so many. And it, it, it has the same, it gives me the same feeling that Onitama does in a sense. Yes. Like Onitama's like, here's the five cards. You're like, okay, how are we going to play this game? In this game, it's like, here are the two god cards. And you're like, oh man, he can win a different way in this time. I got to stop him from doing that. But I have this cool special power I can do. Great, great game. And the Golden Fleece expansion that they made for it adds even more variety to the game. Just, I really, really like this game. Um, it looks amazing. You can yeah. now get it for a fairly inexpensive price. Really? Uh, well, you, the, who picked it up? The one, um, it was picked up by um, Spin Master. I think Spin Master bought the game from Roxley. Really? So they uh, they took they took the big giant thing that goes underneath the board, so the board is not quite so high up now. Like they took that out? Yeah, they took it out. They 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 cut some corners, you know, on, on the production. I did production not realize and, uh, this was being reprinted by a different company. Yeah, it's going mm -hmm. to mass market now. So that's great, great game, Santorini. Hmm. Cool. Let me go out and get myself a copy. Is it me? It is. Okay. Uh, My 63 is another Euro game. This is one that... Um, ah, forget it. It's Santiago de Cuba. Oh, okay. And it is a game in which you are basically moving around a rondelle, which represents the entire... You're, you're driving, driving a car you're driving around <laughs> And uh, taking actions depending on where you stopped. Mechanically, the description of said game is pretty standard stuff. It sounds like a lot of other Euro games. You use characters, they give you powers, you collect stuff, you take it to the port, you ship it out for victory points. But the game is small enough, it's kind of like clean enough that I really gravitate towards it. Because I, I find a lot of Euro games that tend to deal with these kinds of activities feel bloated to me. They feel like too much is going on, like things could have been left on the like cutting room floor. Cuba itself. Yeah, yeah, that one's got a lot of stuff. Um, and this one is just clean. I, I the game, Cuba. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was not meant, casting aspirations on an entire country. Well, I'm just, I want to make the, sure. Uh, <laughs> this one, I just really enjoy the, the how straightforward everything seems while still allowing you to pick what you want to go with. 
it just sings to me. I don't know what it is. Santiago de Cuba is a great little Euro game of optimizing what you want to do, and it does so in a great, great way. So that's my 63. I like it too, but wow. I, I'm... I'm very impressed that that's on your top 100. Impressed? Right. Impressed, but I meant it was like... Pfft. Yes. All right. Interesting. No, I like it. it it's, to me, it's, it's a solid seven. <laughs> no, my number 63 is a, abstract. a game that is not abstract. All I know is it's not Command and Colors. It's not Command and Colors. That is correct. Because <laughs> he's in the next that's two. True. So I'm using, I'm using my correct. super logical skills. And you are smart. <laughs> My number 63 is a uh, UA Rosenberg game that replaced Agricola for oh, me. Okay. That is Caverna. Cave vs. Cave? No. No. I, I, I like Caverna better than Cave vs. Cave, although Cave vs. Cave is fun in just the two player format, of course. But um, if I'm going to play Caverna, I want to play the multiple player, not just two. I really enjoy it. I like the fact. Um, it's one word it, why he likes it. Took the, well, that's part of it. That's part of it. Um, that's most of it. But <laughs> it, it is part of it. Um, the other part is the actual gameplay. I like how they took the basic construct of Agricola and made it fun. Um, because you can go out and, and adventure. You have multiple Dwarves. paths to victory where you can build up your cave or you can build up your farm or Donkeys. you can do a little bit of both. Um, there's a number of different things you can do, a lot like Agricola was, but this one is just, uh, in my opinion, it's streamlined, it's more fun, you don't have to read huge blocks of texts on cards that are written in a very small print that you need almost a magnifying glass for. Um, there's just so many things that are better than Agricola for this one, so it has done away with Agricola for me. Caverna, my number 63. Number 62. My number 62 is a dice game, and this one actually, we were just talking about going sort of sort of mass market. This one uh, was just recently picked up to be sold at Target stores here. Yahtzee. In this sense. Yahtzee. <laughs> they just discovered Yahtzee. This is Las Vegas. Uh, they oh, just, really? That's in Target? They just put out in Target in a different package. Wait, is this Las Vegas or Las Vegas? Isn't it like a Las Vegas the dice game, or is that what it, they're just calling it? There's a Las Vegas the card game based on the dice game. Oh, so, stop yeah. doing this, publishers! <laughs> <laughs> the dice game was first, and this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is one I've had tons of success with, with family members especially. Oh, it's a great gateway game. The game is completely language independent for one thing, and all you're doing is rolling all your dice and then selecting a number, and every every face that shows that number you assign those to that casino that casino has had some money placed on it and you're trying to win it by having the most dice there and next time it comes around again you roll all the ones you've got left it's just so simple it's so clean that is all the rules pretty much except for seven and it just i, I love that idea of getting a roll and choosing to put out a single die somewhere you don't care because you're hoping the next roll you got more dice and you can really go strong somewhere else and you know blow someone away and take all the money and that's 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 about as deep as it gets really but it's that push your luck feel that ooh come on come on dice give me what i want moment that what you really that really makes you feel like you're huh what you really really want yes oh my god you guys are killing me with these bad jokes um oh, but you can make the bad jokes it's okay. Las Vegas, 62. I actually played this at Origins um, this year uh, up in the uh, on the second floor of a hotel. Uh, I think it was after you had already taken off. I went to bed. And uh, we were up there in that little where, that area where they have the, the table set up. Anyway. Dining um, room. It doesn't matter. It was, I don't know why it's it. on the I second had, floor had, or why there's tables. Great, okay, there we go. It was, it was a game. We played, I, goodness, I, I want to say it was like eight players. You can Does play, uh, that, uh, maybe, yeah, high? maybe. I mean, there was a lot of, uh, maybe six. There, maybe there were six people, but it was fun. It was fun. It's frustrating um, because it's, it's all based on die rolls. I mean, that's all it's based on. Mm -hmm. And you could just not roll what you need to roll, and everybody else can roll exactly what you don't want them to roll. So there is that. But I did enjoy myself. It was fun. So what's your 62? My number 62. Why are you looking at you I like don't know. That? It's like freaking me out. <laughs> I'm not even going to look at it. There's two cards there. 
Are you doing a Maverick no. thing? I'm not even gonna look at the car. My number 62, this is my number 61. I wasn't even looking at it. This is my number 62, it's Blood Bowl. Okay. <laughs> That's right, baby. Why are you staring at me? Because I'm good like that. I don't know, I'm freaking out, man. I'm gonna push my lip. Blood Bowl. Were you like making that up? It does say no. Blood Bowl. No. Now, you did not play Blood Bowl until this past year, right? I did not, yeah. I, I, I did not play. Noob. Yes, I am. I am completely a noob as far as Blood Bowl is concerned. Ugh. Um, I. When I was originally, when I originally got into GW's products, it was with uh, Warhammer 40K. Right. And they had Blood Bowl. I saw that they had Blood Bowl available, but I was like, I don't want two different games that I want to get into, so right. I just stuck with Warhammer 40K. And I wrote off Necromunda and, and Mordheim and, and all that other stuff. I just stuck with one. Uh, so when they came out with this reboot, I was like, okay, well, I want to check it out now because everybody says everything good about this game that like the game. Mm-hmm. And so I, I gave it a whirl, and it's really fun. And, of course, this is a... The 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 opening box, the core box, is, is just a basic game. You can, you can expand upon it. You can make it as big as you possibly want to. There's a huge rule book. Uh, that you could buy for it and all this other kind of stuff, but just the core core box is is really fun and it has humans versus orcs. Really enjoy that uh, dichotomy. The board is double sided. You can play orcs home field or, or humans home field. And Are they different? No, they're they're basically the same. Just and, different look. Yeah, just different look aesthetically. It's just the only difference. That's but, useful. Um, hmm? This coming from the abstract. <laughs> So I could just have a, have a brown board out there with squares on it, and I'm good. And then they go, you shut up, sir. They go, that's beautiful. Yes, exactly. So anyway, um, without any more comments from the peanut gallery. Can I get one more in there? No. Well, you probably will anyway. But Blood Bowl, really like it. I am talking about the 2016 edition. My number, 62. My number 62 is another new game, and this one I did not expect to love as much as I did. It looked gorgeous when we got it, and when we played it, I was just bowled over. I like it with all the player counts, and that is Photosynthesis. Oh. Um, Photosynthesis is, I'm, I, I, I just, wow. I'm, I, Sam took the copy that we got, and I went out and got another copy. That's how much I like the game. I just, I really think this is a fantastic gateway-style game. Mm-hmm. That gives you simple choices, but gives you a little bit of wide variety. Is mean as all get out, mm-hmm. but not Can mean. Be. But not being mean for mean's sake necessarily. Right. You are working for yourself, and if you mm-hmm. hurt the other people in the process, that's just a bonus. So be it. Uh, it's a unique theme. It looks great on the table. People will stop mm-hmm. and be like, "What are you doing?" And it's easy to teach. There's really nothing. I mean, the only thing I might say I dislike about it is I think the box is kind of a wimpy. Weak box. It's not a very good box for what's inside it. Well, yeah. You mean like the quality? It's yeah. The box is thin compared to really? many games. The box yeah, is yeah. Thin and the insert is. Well, who cares? Because but at least the box is big enough that you don't have to take the trees apart every time. Oh, that would be a nightmare. So that, that's true. it. Yes. That now some true. people in our gaming group took this game and said it wasn't tough enough, and they went even harder with the game. There's like an optional variant to make the game even tougher, and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good where we're at. <laughs> um, but really love this game. I think I know it was on your list. I think. And wasn't it on yours too? Mm, no, no, it's not in my top 100. I like it, but it did not I make my top 100. I love this game. Photosynthesis. Number 61. All right, this is, I believe, I'm trying to remember. I don't think that there are any other of this kind of game, this version, any other versions of this game, rather, in the rest of my 60 games. This is my favorite version of Ticket to Ride, and it is Ticket to Ride Markland. Um, now, they've come out with Ticket to Ride Germany. Pale limitation! Which okay, wait, is... Wait, hold on. Are we allowed to do, like, Ticket to Ride this and then Ticket to Ride that? Well, I'm sure you're going to do that with Pandemic, so oh. I would imagine. Prob- I mean, it's probably... Okay. He can say the Pandemic family, including yeah, Dice we were, Game. I thought we were doing that. Okay, go ahead. I thought we were doing what? What does it matter? Ticket to Ride Marklin. Yeah, Ticket to Ride Marklin. It's, I'm pretty sure it's my only Ticket to Ride on the list because it is my favorite version of Ticket to Ride. Um... Uh, I like the passenger aspect of it, which I believe, I haven't played Germany, but I believe they've swapped that out. It's really different. It's, it's different. It's completely different. So there you have it. Um, I like the look of the game. Each individual card has a different 
Uh, what are you doing? Give me because weird, he has like... this garbage opinion of this. That is like the best looking set. Yeah. All the trains are different, and he's yeah. like, oh, I don't really like how it looks. Because you have no soul. That's okay. I like, still don't like how like it looks. He like the model train look of it. Yeah. It's amazing. Like it. It I'm allowed great. to not like how something looks. No, you're that's, not. That's true. Not you when it's good. Allowed. You are allowed to be wrong. Good right. is right. based on your perception, sir, which is wrong. <laughs> Game's ugly. You look good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really enjoy uh, Ticket to Ride. Mark has always been my favorite version of Ticket to Ride, and it probably will continue to be that way. I just the way, I like the way it looks. I like all the different uh, attentions to detail that they did. I like the the little, um, uh, I guess it's called uh, not a pamphlet, but a um, like a. A book inside that that gives you kind of a history of the Markland really? series. Really, okay, in there? Okay. Yeah, it gives that too. I like little stuff like you that. Bet. I appreciate Mark. You had read that book. Um, <laughs> so that's my number sixty-one <laughs> ticket to ride the Markland edition. Someday I'll have a, my own Markland train set. All right, but Z won't be able he to come look at that. it. He yeah, does he want that bad. Yeah, he does. Can ah. I come over and like push like push stuff in its way and stuff? Yeah, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. What's your favorite games? Like little pandemic cubes, train. <laughs> <laughs> Run right over them. Sure. All right. So my uh, 61 is uh, technically it's the second year it's been on the list, although this is kind of a new game because the second edition of this game is so different than the first version, and that is Rum and Bones. Mm, uh, yeah, Rum okay. and Bones, I liked it. I liked it enough to put on my nice, list last year. Nice. But Rum and Bones second edition, or second tide, I guess it's called, yes. I like even more. So I, I probably Rum and Bones would have made my list anyway. I don't okay. know, but okay. I mean probably. But second tide, Definitely. it's they really streamline how the game works. It's faster. Right. Um, you got three heroes. You're just going back and forth. They're falling off overboard, coming back on. The new system of purchasing upgrades for your pirates. It's it's a great piratey game. I just like. Sure, I know that it's fantasy pirates. You know the Kraken and all that stuff. But it's just every time I play it. I'm totally entertained by it. I do realize there's a good chunk of luck in those dice rolls. Yes. You know, you could lose the game because you sometimes have just bad, you know, when you're swinging at somebody you miss or whatever. I don't care. The card play, summoning the Kraken, the factions feel very different. Just really, really like this game. Very good choice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, me too, yeah. Promos for Rum and Bones are great also. Oh. <laughs> Best promos <laughs> out there. Except when going us up against a six-sided die. Or a bag of spice. <laughs> or a bag of, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, my number 61, I do believe both of these gentlemen, especially Sam, will approve of. I forget if this was on your list already. My 61 is Mission Red Planet. Mission Red Planet, I used to have the original printing of it from Asmodee. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, enjoyed that game quite a bit. Uh, and then I kept it actually all the way through the second edition coming out. I had both for a brief moment there, and then I finally did get rid of the original because I do think the available print is very, very good. <coughs> Excuse me. The new one has the That's little. Two. Huh? That's number two. Oh, man. How many do I get? I'll find out when the throat punch comes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> throat the punch for coughing? Yeah, I guess so. It'll help It'll dislodge help. Yeah. the throat. Exactly. Uh, the new one has a little miniature uh, spaceman. It has the addition of Phobos, is the you know the moon of Mars as a new playable space, which was from what I understand in the original design, and they pulled it out. Uh, and the game is just a really fun area control, which I find to be an engaging mechanism, but kind of a dry mechanism, you know. And that's married with character selection and fun spacey stuff. Which livens up the whole thing. And the addition of Phobos really threw it. And that really and messes it with it, yeah. And just the. And you count down from 10 to 1. That I. Whatever, yes. That was awesome. That was a good addition. My favorite new thing is the. the just sort of the images I get in my head when people like th launch from Phobos and land on the planet's surface. Just I, I just like those moments. I'm always making little noises and stuff. Like they're entering the atmosphere or whatever, you know? Like drop ships, boom, boom. Um, I really like the game. It's a great area control game. My 61 mission, Red Planet. That is a good game. I do approve. It's actually my 166, which is, again, pretty high in the, out of the thousands of games. But yeah, this... Well, I'll tell you what. That's one of the things high. I like about this game is it... Very few Euro games can handle six players... And yeah. this and one not take forever and right. be quick, yeah. And this one 
is okay with that that number. I mean, there's a lot more ships blowing up. <laughs> Right. But that's okay. It's it's still fun. It's an entertaining game overall, and it really has held up well over time. Yeah, surprisingly so. well. Yeah. All right. Well, next time we do this, we will finish the first half of our top 100. The games <laughs> only get better on my list anyway. I don't know these guys. No, whatever. no. Um, they so, get progressively mm-hmm. worse on mine. Probably. They get progressive. We're gonna do a countdown. 100 worst games. Yeah, of my all number time. 100 was my first pick. That was the best game. Isn't that what we're all doing? Yeah. Okay. All right. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side. Some say that Tom is like a giant among men. Others say he's a little obsessed. I don't even have a top ten. Tom Vassell's top 100 games of all time. He's got flavor in his top 100 games. Voice of the people Z Garcia Voice of the people